Hey guys, MCN Mike here, and welcome to the second Retro Vember video out of three. Today, we're not exactly talking about games in particular. Rather, we're talking about a cult classic that defied all odds and made the series as well known as it is today, despite its lack of popularity on release. The game we're talking about today is Earthbound, a JRPG on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. In fact, it was one of the first ever Nintendo published JRPG games, releasing just a year after the first Fire Emblem. Fun fact. Earthbound, as many fans know, is quite the oddball. From the game's humor, to the occasional fourth wall breaks, to the wacky story and settings that the game has you travel in, this game will certainly leave a lasting impression on any player. If you want to see an in-depth walkthrough that shows all the quirkiness of this game, I recommend checking out Chugga Conroy's 2018 Earthbound Let's Play. If you're interested in watching that, click the eye icon in the top right corner of the screen. For mobile users, the link will be in the description down below. Without further delay, let's talk about Earthbound. It's one thing to make a game that sells really well when it releases. However, what about selling someone a game before it comes out? No, I'm not talking about pre-orders. Marketing, as with any industry, is crucial to getting your name and product out there. If you want to sell millions of copies, you better be ready to shell out the big bucks for posters, TV ads, and everything in between. Of course, you don't want to spend too much on advertising, as your product might not live up to the hype the advertising generated before release. Earthbound was essentially the opposite. There was little to no advertising, and it kind of flopped. There's multiple reasons for this, like RPGs not being popular here in the West among other things. But what most people point to is the marketing the game had. Let's see how Nintendo went about advertising this now called cult classic. The year was 1995, the Super Nintendo was on its way out, with the Nintendo 64, known at the time as the Ultra 64, on its way. Even though it was the tail end of the Super Nintendo's life cycle, Shigeru Miyamoto insisted that Earthbound be brought to the West, as he believed it would be a huge success in the States. Nintendo supposedly spent $2 million at the time to market this game with infamous taglines such as, This game stinks. According to Earthbound Central, most of the marketing campaign was mainly toddler humor, as a lot of the marketing material made jokes about farts and bad smells. The most notorious part of this advertising campaign was by far the scratch and sniff featuring different things from the game. This page is from what I assume is a Nintendo Power magazine, and it had a page where innocent readers could scratch and sniff some pizza, a burger joint, a trash can, a pile of barf? <laughs> Wait, what? I'm sorry, they had scratch and sniff for vomit and trash? Hold on, so you're telling me that not only was the game brought to the West because Miyamoto said, trust me bro, it'll work, but it also was advertised as something that should be avoided? Why would you insist on bringing a game overseas and then showing it off like it's the bane of Nintendo's existence? Well, maybe the reverse psychology worked. Perhaps it actually did sell millions like Nintendo hoped. <laughs> so, let's try to understand what happened here. Brazilian magazine Super Game Power had the following to say about Earthbound in their review. The American humor was too mature and that the gameplay was too immature, as if for beginners. The lack of a convincing storyline and the dull NES clone graphics will make serious RPG fans a little cautious about approaching Earthbound. The humor is too mature for little kids and the gameplay is too immature for older gamers. Now, my interpretation could be wrong, but from what I can gather, this game wasn't for newcomers to the JRPG genre of games, yet the humor was too mature for young audiences. So if this game isn't for experienced players or young audiences, who was it for? Sure, little Timmy can pick up a copy of the game, but he's not going to be able to understand the humor, so it'll kind of be alienating to him. Meanwhile, if, say, little Timmy's older brother Tommy played the game, he'd be bored to death since the game is apparently made for beginners. What I've deduced from this entire situation is that the lack of sales can be attributed to a poor marketing campaign that drove consumers away 
but also the same marketing didn't even make it clear who the game was for. Yet despite the seemingly bad rap this game got back in the day, it's looked back on as great, almost a work of art. Why? Like, was there something that made people change their minds? How, despite the poor marketing and lack of abundant sales, did Earthbound become hailed as a cult classic? Well, my first logical step was to Google, why do people like Earthbound? I figured that would be the most straightforward way of finding an answer. In my quest to find an answer, I came across an article from Destructoid, written the same week that Earthbound was re-released on the Wii U's virtual console. This article, titled, Earthbound, So What's the Big Deal?, points to multiple aspects that I had previously talked about in this video. A quote from this article reads, It's a simple looking game about children, which implies that it's a simple game for children, but it's not a kid's game. Later, the article goes on to say that children are the genuine, selfless heroes, and the adults are the ridiculous, misguided, hubers laden fools, caught up in classism, selfish ambition, and immaterial goods like money and power. It may be a stretch to say this, but I think this means Earthbound is one of the pioneers of games creating stories based around younger protagonists going against adults and, by extension, society as a whole. It's almost like it's painting a bad picture of adults. I mean, think about it, there's plenty of modern games out there that carry this theme. A few I can think of off the top of my head is Persona 4 and Persona 5, but I bet there's plenty more out there that I can't think of right now. So, is that why people like it so much? Because it makes adults look like the bad guys? Not entirely. While that is an interesting theme that, at the time, hadn't been done before, it's also the RPG elements combined with the crazy story. But Mike, didn't you just say the gameplay was part of the reason people didn't like it? That's true, I did indeed say that. However, I submit that RPGs were few and far between back when Earthbound hit the scene. I mean, looking at what you had around 1995, your options of big ticket RPGs were basically Final Fantasy VI and Chrono Trigger. And now look at the variety of games we have today. What I'm saying is, now that RPGs are a more understood genre of games, we can go back and appreciate where RPGs started to gain momentum. At the time, the idea of playing as a few children with magic powers saving the world was so far-fetched. These days, we can look at Earthbound in retrospect and realize that what Nintendo tried to do was actually a good idea. That, I think, is why Earthbound is looked at as a cult classic. What you may call rose-tinted glasses or nostalgia is what I call understanding that which was previously obscure. Thanks for watching my second Retrovember video. I know, this video was way later than it was supposed to be. College has been ramping up, so I've been trying to pick up the slack for Thanksgiving break. I'll work my hardest to get the final video out this month. You could say the script is under construction. That's the only hint I'll give you for now. What are your thoughts on Earthbound? Did you like the game? Let me know either in the comments below or use hashtag Retrovember on all social platforms. I suggest subscribing so you'll see the next Retrovember video, and more content after that including game reviews and stream VODs. I'll see you guys in the next one.